Hey, Brian Losey here, Priority One Fishing. We're going to mix it up today, do something a little bit different. We're here in the kitchen and uh, we're going to be uh, dipping some plastics, making our own uh, plastic squids for an upcoming kokanee trip. So we want to do a gold flake, heavy gold flake squid, uh, try something a little bit different, see if we can't uh, catch a few fish on it. So uh, what I have set up here, and you probably hear the fan in the background first, safety first. Get the fumes out of here. You don't want to be, uh, be breathing in this plastisol as you're heating it up. And then I've got a, a heat resistant glove as well too to kind of help me maneuver the uh, Pyrex cup around um, as we're dipping this plastic. So how are we making these? So you hear about injection molds, you hear about hand pours. Well, we're going to be dipping tubes with a Phillips screwdriver. So <laughs> 3 16 inch diameter, like a number one Phillips screwdriver. And it's perfect for doing this application. What I've done is I've taken a black magic marker and I've marked uh, some tape that I have here and then wrap the tape around so that black mark does not come off at about an inch and three quarters, somewhere in that range, kind of get our, our tubes consistent, our squids consistent in the size that we're, we want to make them. And then I use a, uh, a worm oil. So you can get worm oil from a lot of your bait uh, manufacturers, you know, uh, suppliers for plastisol and so forth. Uh, this is an actual worm oil, no scents, anything like that in it. And it's a high temperature oil. Um, you can also use a coconut oil. I've used coconut oil, it works really well for this application. And I haven't had any problems with it burning at all. But we uh, coat that really well, and that's gonna help our plastic uh, slide off of that once we get this tube dipped. And then I've heated up some plastisol. Now, I use a uh, kind of like an automotive temperature gun here, basically, to, to manage my temperature in my plastisol. And I've heated it up to originally about 370 degrees or so. And I'm waiting for this temperature to drop down around 345, 346. That's where we're at. That's pretty good. Before we add our flake. Now, the flake we're going to be using is a 0 0.40. This is considered a large, uh, this is hexagonal gold flake. And we're going to go pretty heavy on the saturation here because uh, I want to turn this thing completely gold. Now, the plastisol that I'm using is a medium durometer plastisol. It's something that is built for tube jigs, uh, designed for tube jigs or uh, so we use it for trick worms, uh, sometimes even drop shot worms. I've added a little bit of hardener to it, uh, just, just a ton, uh, just a little bit, not a ton, just to try to get that, uh, you know, stiffen up just a little bit because I want these tubes to kind of hold some structure. Now I've got me a water bath over here, uh, just a little bowl full of some cold water, which will drop our tubes in to kind of help set those tubes. So we're not making really big baits, we're not doing uh, injection molds in an aluminum mold that gets really high temp and we have to wait for that to cool down before we can even take them out of the mold. Uh, we can drop these right in there. So to measure this out consistently, we've got a little uh, half teaspoon measuring scoop here and we're just going to start adding some of this down into our plastisol. Kind of get away from the fan a little bit so it doesn't blow us all over the place. <laughs> I'm starting with one teaspoon. I want this to be pretty heavy. Let's try a teaspoon and a half. Start mixing it and we'll see what it looks like there. I'm gonna tip the camera so you can see what we're doing. There we go. Okay, now this is about 340 degrees when I put that metal flake in there, or that uh, glitter in there. You can see it's starting to turn kind of that gold all around. Just turns that magically into just a straight gold kind of plastisol look to it. So that's pretty thick, that's not too bad. That might be about where we want to go. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Now, this will eventually uh, start to sink down to the bottom. We might have to heat this up just a little bit more. I want to start dipping right around 310 degrees, which is really kind of cool for Plastisol. But the reason I want to do that is I don't want to have to dip it so many times that I end up with all the glitter just running right off of the plastic, uh, right off the tube that we're making, or the squid we're making. Let's add just a touch more. Just a touch more to that. Okay, and then we'll get this heated up here for a second. I think we're getting a little cool. Double check it. Yeah, we're about right where we want to dip right now. Now, I heat, by heating the plastic up to about 375, I don't use a vacuum chamber to, to remove the air bubbles in this. I just kind of get that temperature right around that 375 mark, let it sit for a minute. And then when I first started stirring it, as I was breaking this plastic up, getting it up to temperature, I would stir it, almost like folding it. 
so that I wouldn't get more air bubbles in it. And they slowly dissipated, slowly made their way out of the oops. <laughs> out of the thing, out of the plastisol itself. There we go. Okay, yeah, we're gonna have to heat this up just a little bit more. Okay, let's get this out. Okay, I'm gonna heat that up real quick, be right back with it. Okay, there we go. Got it all heated up again. It still might be a little hot now, but you can see as we heat it up, some of those, uh, that glitter we put in there has caused a few more bubbles to appear. So we're going to kind of be careful just kind of mixing it around the edges here just to get that glitter kind of into the center make it nice and consistent. And then we'll watch our temperature till we get down to about that 310, 315 degree range somewhere in there. Yeah, important to use that glove. There's nothing worse than splashing this stuff on your hand. It does it just keeps on burning. There we go. Let's check our temperature. 336. It's dropping just about right. A few more seconds here. You kind of got that almost brown look to it a little bit too because of the way that gold is reflecting through the plastisol. Okay. Set that off there. 320, 318. I think we're about ready to go. Okay. So now we're going to take our screwdriver and we got that worm oil on it. I'm going to dip it straight down to our mark. Lift it out. And we're going to do this about three times, I think. Let's see what it does here for our first one. Okay, I'm gonna leave that little nose on there too. So it kind of looks like a squid. And see we're about, not quite an eighth, between an eighth and a sixteenth of an inch thick. So we can reach over and find some scissors here. Maybe not. <laughs> All right, let's not do that. Let's see if I can cut that. That's not a big deal. I can always clean this up afterwards if I needed to. Yeah, we might go find some scissors for the next one. Okay. Now as we let that just kind of do its thing, I was holding it straight up and down so that I could get a nice even coat and kind of let everything work its way towards the nose. I want the plastic to be a little thicker up there so I have a little more structure and then a little more movement in the legs. Okay, I think we're about there. And you see how with that worm oil, it just slides right off. And just drop it into our uh, cold water. Okay, we might be able to get another one out of this. Let's give it a shot. As it cools down even more, we might only do two dips. Let's see what it looks like there. You don't have to worry too much about this plastic uh, sticking to anything because it, it peels right off once it dries. Three. A little bit of an air bubble on that one. That's where the tentacles are going to be. So I'm not too worried about it. See if I had enough warm oil on there. Yeah, see it's sticking a little bit more. Don't push it too much. It's kind of ripply. Yeah, looks like we need a little bit more warm oil. For that warm oil, we just get a little bit on our fingers, kind of coat it. One thing that's also nice about the screwdriver method is here: this metal gets really, really hot. And uh, without having something to hang on to, it can be really tough to, to do a lot of these. Up there. 
and check our temperature. Rail three, I think we can do another one here. Oops, that didn't work. We might have to cool our uh, screwdriver down with some cold water and then make sure it's nice and dry before we do that. Put it back in the plastisol. It's because that metal's heating up so much that it seems like that plastic tube is just going to kind of roll right off of it. Yeah, but if you do have to cool that down with cold water, make sure you make get it completely dry. You do not want to put any type of water or moisture in your plastisol. Okay, there's that. Get that one off. See, by adding that worm oil again, it just slides right off. Okay, all right, we're gonna take another second and see if I can get this heated back up. We'll do a couple more of them. There we go. See, we can keep that metal just a little bit cooler and come off pretty nice. Okay, so there you have it. We'll show you how to rig one of these here in just a second. I mean, nice little tubes should be perfect for squids. Um, stay tuned, we're gonna put one of these together for you. All right, so this is what we call a tube cutter. As you can see, we got a bunch of razor blades like you use in some of your uh, uh, just uh, utility knives. And I think it's got like 10 blades on here and they're wedged into this block. So they're evenly spaced, about a 16th of an inch or so apart and we're gonna use this to cut the tentacles into these tubes. Now you wanna make sure that you got quite a bit of worm oil on here. So I'm gonna put a little bit across the, the edge of the blade and I'm gonna turn it up like this. Yeah, so we make sure that we get it running down onto those edges really well. Okay, let's grab us a tube. I'll show you how this works. Okay, those have been set up in there. They're pretty, per pretty perfect, actually. I mean, that's about the, the durometer that we want those to be and the thickness that we want those to be. I'm not gonna worry about trimming the edge because those are all just gonna flay apart anyways once we do cut them. Now, traditional uh, squids, you only have about a half of an inch right at the top, right up here. So we're gonna make this mostly skirt and we're gonna come up here Let's do about, yeah, about half to three quarters of an inch, somewhere in there from the head. Lock that down, and press right through it. Now you want to give it a good, hard, kind of firm movement there, <laughs> just to kind of make sure you're getting cut all the way through. There we go, now you can see we got that all the way through. This is why you need that oil. So you want to be able to pull those out just like that. So these have to separate just a little bit. But there's our tentacles. If they break, they break. Sometimes it happens. But just getting them separated so they have all that movement. Everything is perfect. There you go. Now that is what we are going to turn into a little kokanee squid. All right, I'm going to finish these other ones up. We'll head over to the table. Okay, we just finished up those gold squids. You can see phenomenal looking squids here. Nice shiny gold flake and a little translucent, which is going to be awesome because we're going to be using some gold beads underneath. I've got some crystals. Let me give it a little bit more bling, a little more flash there some gold blades, of course some clevises for those blades. And we're gonna be using number two hooks and 15 pound fluorocarbon. Now I use 15 pound fluorocarbon uh, because I like the stiffness of it. That's way overkill for kokanee fishing, absolutely. But the stiffness of that fluorocarbon line when you attach it to a dodger just really kicks that squid back and forth and you get the maximum amount of action out of it. So uh, I like to use the 15 pound. And you see a lot of uh, pre-rigs, uh, the ones that you buy at the store are gonna be made with the 12 pound test. A lot of for the same reason as well. You to get that stiffness and kind of get that kick and that action out of the squid uh, that's applied to it from the dodger. Now, get yourself a needle. You're gonna need a needle for this as well. It's gonna help with threading uh, the plastic squids here. 
um, onto your fishing line because we're going to use the eyelet. You want that eyelet on the back of this needle to be large enough you can actually get the 15 pound test through it. Um, don't want to get a real small needle, but it will absolutely help out. Now back to the hooks uh, before we start tying this. The hooks, I'm using our number two Eagle Claw uh, laser sharp hook. And uh, I've used Gamakatsu, I've used some of the other hooks as well, and they're great hooks. Uh, number twos though, the number two on this for some larger kokanee that we're targeting, uh, just to get a little bit better bite on that hook point, a lot of your rigs are tied with number four hooks. And also if you get later in the season, switching out to number twos can be uh, absolutely the right method, the right way to go, because those fish will go through a canine uh, kind of structural change in their jaws, and they get real bony, and uh, that number two hook will really start to hang on to those fish better. Okay, let's cut us off some 15-pound uh, test fluorocarbon here. I'm always going to pull off way more than I'm going to use. I got a couple of feet of fluorocarbon here, and thread it through the eyelet. I like to hold the hook point up starting here. Okay, just like that. We're going to do uh, first a traditional snell knot, which means I am going to make a loop, pull my tag end. This loop is just adjacent to the hook there. Pull my tag into just about the length of the hook shank, maybe a little bit uh, larger than that, and then make that loop big enough that I can get my fingers in it there. And I start with my index finger and my thumb, put my index finger and my thumb in the loop just like that. I go over the hook shank over the tag end and at the bottom I'm going to shift and switch my fingers to my middle finger and my index finger. That way when I come back up over the top I can rotate and rotate and rotate. And I'll do this for about 10 wraps. Now we get a nice good base on there and then hold it between my index finger and my middle finger on my left hand so it doesn't come loose. Pull the tag in to get some of that slack out of there. Swap hands, and then pull that loop up in to make that snell knot. And you can see it's a nice, secure, nicely tight snell knot. Okay, let's cut off our tag in there. In there, and snip it off. Just leaving just a little bit of it left there, so not too bad. Okay, now let's take our second hook. Now second hook, we're going to thread from the back side of the eyelet so that the hooks are in line. Okay, just like that. Now a lot of uh, rigs you'll see are going to be tied with the hooks in line like this, kind of you know facing the same direction. I like to switch this over and have a hook go in the opposite direction. And I'm going to leave about a half of an inch of a gap between the bend of the front hook now and the eyelet of the back hook. You want to hold that nice and tight so it doesn't slip on you. Now we're going to do what's called a no-knot snell on this front one. No-knot snell is taking that front line and we're going to wrap it behind the eyelet, over the shank of the hook, and we're going to wrap it all the way down. Just make sure it's in line, not back and over itself. But again, about the 10 wraps. Okay. Then holding those tight so they don't come loose. I'm going to wrap two wraps heading back up towards the eyelet. Back up over the existing wraps we just did. Okay, Go all the way to the end of my leader that I've cut off and feed it. Oops, get it up in there. Back up through the eyelet of the hook. Now we're going from the back to the front so everything's in line like this. Okay, Now Get something round that you don't damage your hook with. I'm going to use the back of these hemostats here. There we go. And just kind of give it a little tug just to kind of secure that knot together. Now it's a no knot snell and it works perfect for this because you can really control that distance easily. And see if we can get that to sit the way we wanted it to. It's, yeah, it's close. We can roll that just a touch to kind of get it to where our hooks are staying kind of opposite like we originally wanted them to. Okay, just like that. Now I say I go about a half of an inch away. I like to have that uh, back hook hanging just a little bit further out away from the squid. Uh, a lot of people will tie them literally eyelet to bend just like that so there's not a lot of gap there. I like to keep that a little bit stretched out. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Now we are going to start stacking some beads. We're going to start with the smaller beads. And in this case, I'm going to put, I think, a crystal first. 
I'm going to have a little bit of that flash on the back. This is actual crystal, uh, four millimeter crystal uh, bead that I actually picked up at a hobby store. Oops. Out of the way there. So actual crystal. Get maximum amount of flash and flicker out of it. Okay, then I'm going to take a small bead. These are small gold plastic beads. These are kind of a small eyelet or a small hole on these beads. Slide that one on. Let's do another crystal. Hold it on here without spilling them all. There we go. Okay. Probably hearing some fans in the background. It is a scorcher today. It's like 100 degrees outside. We are running fans. Fans everywhere. Air conditioner, fan, every room. <laughs> okay, now I got the crystal on. I'm going to put another small bead. And these beads are uh, really quite small. I mean, these ones are about, uh, oh, three millimeter, four millimeter beads as well. So they're matching the size of what we got with the uh, crystal. So now I've got a total of four beads on there. Now I'm going to do a big bead, or a bigger bead. This one right here is about a six millimeter. I chose to go this size of bead on this because the squids we made are a little bit larger because we use that 3 16 inch uh, diameter screwdriver. So I want to have that just a touch, touch bigger like that. Now if you see if we measure that in there, you can see that we're just about right I think I might add one more big bead. Just measured it up to the tube to see if it was gonna fit correctly. We wanna have that uh, hook point on that first hook come just into the skirt, just towards the back of the skirt, and then have that stinger hook extending all the way back out of it. Yeah, so we're gonna, that's about right. Okay, now comes the needle. What we want to do with the needle is we're not going to push the uh, sharp end through the nose. We're actually going to push the eyelet of the needle through the nose. So we go right to our plastic. Okay, now we just push that as close to center as we can through our tube. Now we take our fishing line, our leader. cut that a little bit. It's, this needle's really close on this 15 pound test to get it to go through. There we go. And you don't have to put it through the eyelet very far, maybe a couple of inches or so. Because we're just using it to kind of draw that fluorocarbon through the plastic, just like that. Now we just took the needle off, thread the plastic, the squid we made, all the way down, all the way over the top of those beads. You see that large bead was just about perfect. It just filled the cavity of that tube just the way that it should have. And our distance is perfect. We got that hook coming out where the bend is right at the skirt. And then our stinger coming off the back of that. So that's a perfect little, little rig right there. Now I'm gonna put another bead. In this case, I'm just gonna use a small plastic orange bead. It, just, it could be one of the gold beads too. I just had a couple of orange ones here. Um, and these are really small. These are like two millimeter, one millimeter beads, something like that. It might even be one millimeter. And we're going to use that as kind of the bearing that our clevis is going to roll around so that it doesn't stick to the nose of the squid. Now let's add our blade. Now these are a hammered blade, Hildebrandt blade, really shiny, gold, bla uh, gold blade, and it's a number two Colorado blade. I'm using a number one clevis. Okay. Load that onto the clevis. Push our line through it. And there we have it. That's all we need to do right there. Let's get that stacked down there. Now, if I wanted to, I could uh, put another bead on top of the clevis uh, to act again kind of as another bearing. Some people do that just to kind of keep that line straight as it goes through um, that clevis piece, but you know, don't really, really need to do that. Well, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna do it. I think I like the look of that. 
Let's grab another one of these little beads. Little orange ones I have in here. And get a hold of it. These beads are really tiny. There we go. Okay. Slide it through there. And you can see that's gonna sit right on top of the clevis. That is our finished rig right there. Not bad, see, not hard to build your own rigs. Now, when I go to adjust my length on this, or I mean, you can leave it long and adjust it while you're out on the lake, I'm gonna cut these, pre-rig these, I mean, get these completely ready to go so that I just have to attach them uh, right to the dodger and I'm, I'm good to go. Now, I wanna have a lot of action on this squid and I'm relying on the dodger to do that. I mean, even though I've got the blade as its own attractor, I'm still gonna keep this maybe 12 inches or so from where I'm attaching it to the Dodger. So I'm gonna keep those leaders nice and short. And I'm gonna go ahead and tie in a double surgeon's knot right here. Just loop the line over itself. Go an overhand knot once, that loop, and fingers to work there, twice. Okay, now I got quite a bit of oil on my fingers from those tubes. Some of that worm oil, but I don't really need to moisten that. But if you don't have that, just make sure you moisten that a little bit with saliva so that it doesn't burn when you go to cinch that fluorocarbon down. And cut off our tag end. All right, we are ready to go fishing. Awesome. So if you like our videos, like our tutorials like this, uh, please uh, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, like us on Instagram, and as always, tight lines.